Hi, it's Kyle from Bytewing Games, and today we're taking a look at QE. QE is a game for three to five players that plays in about 30 minutes. The theme of the game is a little strange to me. It's, the, it's bailing out companies in the 2008 financial crisis. And it honestly doesn't play a huge role in how the game works, so we'll really just set that to the side. At its core, QE is an auctioning game. Throughout the game, there will be a tile that's placed out in the middle of the table. Each player will secretly bid on this tile, and whichever player bids the highest wins that tile and the associated points. So how do you get points based off of these tiles? Each tile has a few different pieces of information. First of all, just straight points. Second of all, it has a certain country or nationality to it, and then it also has a certain symbol. So let's take a look at each of these. The points are just straight points. You'll mark them off on your board here. The nationalities, at the first of the game, each player will be given a board for their country, US, China, Japan, etc. If you buy a tile in your country, you can get bonus points for that. There are also symbols shown on each of the tiles. Throughout the game, you'll be gaining points based off of how many tiles of a certain color that you win in the bids. For example, if you end up with three green tiles, you'll earn six points. If you have one of each of the four colors, you'll get eight points. So how the game will actually work is each player will take a turn being the auctioneer. They will flip a tile, they will openly show what their bid for that tile is. All other players will then secretly bid on that tile. The auctioneer looks at all of the bids writes down the winning bid on the back of this tile and gives it back to that player, not showing any of the other players what that winning bid was. Let's see how that might work. The auctioneer flips over the Japan tile worth three points with a yellow corn symbol. He decides to bid $90. All other players secretly bid. The auctioneer looks at the player's bids, writes the winning bid of $107 on the back of the Japan tile and gives it to the winning player, in this case, Japan. The bid is still not shown to any other players. The winning player gets three points, crosses off the Japan symbol since they have the Japan board, and they mark off a yellow symbol. The next player clockwise becomes the auctioneer and play continues. The game ends once all of the tiles have been auctioned off. Now the really interesting thing about this game is that there is no money. You can spend as much money as you want when bidding for these tiles. And I know what you're thinking. I'll just spend a million dollars every turn and always win the tiles. But here's the catch. The player who spends the most money automatically loses the game. So is QE fun? Almost everyone that I've shown this game to has instantly fallen in love with it and really wants to play it again. That's a really good sign of a, a good game to me. The number one thing that I love about this game is that there is no limit to the amount of money you can spend. So you really could spend as much as you want, but if you're the player that spends the most, you automatically lose the game. So what you need to do is figure out how much everyone else has spent and spend just a little less than them. But you don't know how much they spent because all of the bids are kept secret. All of those things combined kind of keep me on the edge of my seat as I'm playing the game. It leaves me with that game anxiety that I really, really enjoy as I'm stressed about how much should I spend? Should I bid higher? Am I going to be the highest spender and lose the game? I love that feeling of anxiety that this game brings. I really enjoy the scoring in this game. It feels very balanced to me that you get points for having a variety of different things, or you get points for specializing in something. You get points if you buy your own country's things, but maybe that's not the symbol you need. There's just a lot of different aspects of the game, and I really do feel like the scoring is very, very balanced. I love how easy and quick this game is to learn. It honestly doesn't take more than five minutes to explain. And since it's just a 30 minute game and five minutes to explain, it can be played so quickly that you can take big risks and you're not that disappointed if it doesn't pan out. If you end up being the one who spent the most money, you're not miserable at the end of the game thinking, I just invested two hours of my life and I lost. You're having a really good time and you're really enjoying the experience. And part of that's because this game is played above the table in lots of ways. It's all about what the players around you are doing and how much they're bidding and you being able to read how much they want something or how much they are bidding, even though you can't see. That feeling of camaraderie in a, in a competitive way is a lot of fun to me as you're really interacting with other players. 
onto the negatives. The game can get a little bit stale after a while. It's an auctioning game and that's what it is and that's all it is. And I really enjoy it, but I've played the game three times in a week and I'm pretty comfortable leaving the game on my shelf for about a month. However, most games do feel that way, so I don't really hold that against QE too much. But just because it's kind of simplified down to a simple auctioning game, there's, there is a lot of replay value, but it's not something that I'd want to play every single day. Overall, I give this game four and a half stars. It is a really fun experience where you're interacting highly with other players through the secret bidding. And I really love that edge of your seat anxiety as you're trying to decide how much to bid but trying not to be the highest bidder. I give two thumbs up for QE. I highly recommend this game. Unless auctioning just isn't your thing, I think you'll really like QE. If there's any other auctioning games that you've played, I'd love to hear about them. I'm a little bit new to that genre. Let me know in the comments below. Until next time.